I'm still following the Gale Commandments, but you know, I have my setbacks. Like, uh, what I usually do in the evening, well, first of all, I get up in the morning and I, uh, I go to the computer and see if my men have tried to contact me on Skype and then I check my Gmail. And, um, and, uh, and if there's nothing there, then I'll go to Facebook and Twitter and all my regular social media sites to see if there's anything I need to deal with. And so that's what I do. I spend like one or two hours on social media, sometimes three hours. Actually, two or three day, two or three hours a day on social media, just updating my sites, uploading video like I'm doing right now to YouTube, sometimes more depending on what I do. And um, I also make sure my website, I maintain my website, I make sure it's up to date <clears throat> and that like if there's a defunct link or something I need to fix, I go in there and take care of that. So, I'm, I'm, so I maintain my website, I maintain my YouTube channel, I do all the artwork for my um, book cover. When I first started writing, I hired people to do the book covers and they all turned out to be Jesuits. And I'd end up with these really crappy looking covers like a, like a, like a, see, let's find it right here. Um, I had a crappy looking cover for Silver Sky and I hired Rose Dog Books to do the cover. And this is what they did. Well, it was worse than this. You see this guy here? I asked them to put Matthew McConaughey on the cover because well, because he starred in the movie version of Silver Skies. And they put this guy here, except they made him a redhead. He looked like some, like, honky-tonk teenager. And I thought, that isn't Matthew McConaughey. And they said, well, we can't use his likeness because of, you know, they said possible lawsuits and stuff. And I thought, oh, well, those Jesuits have got all their butts covered. So I said, okay. Um, so I actually went in and redid this, and I kind of botched it. I, I made his hair darker, and I changed his facial expressions to make him look manly. And he looks sort of like Matthew, but he doesn't, you know, because Matthew starred in the movie. I actually wanted to use Matthew's real picture. I was naive when I first started off. First of all, we found out later that Rose Dog Books is a Jesuit company. They charged me $2,800 to publish this book. So it's like, uh, I didn't have the internet back then, I didn't have a computer, I didn't realize there were sorry, sites like Lulu and Amazon where you can do it yourself and for free if you're good. Anyways, over the past four or five years I've learned how to do my own artwork. It just stopped, what, what, the way I got into that was, well, I would, uh, I would see a picture of Vladimir that I liked and that was not making it out online like I have a picture of him that I just love. I wonder if I still have it here. Um, it's a, here it is. This is from my newspaper. See that picture there? So I said, oh, I love that picture. So what I did is I enlarged it on my computer screen and I kind of like traced it using pencil. And then I discovered, uh, and then what I do then I, then I get kind of like the outline of his face, where his eyebrows are, his eyes are, his nose, his mouth, his ears, and everything. Then I, then I actually started doing some sites on how to draw portraits. <laughs> so I said, okay, I've got where the lines go, so let's kind of like fill it in artistically. So I taught myself how to draw uh, like charcoal portraits using pencil. Because Jesus says I can't spend any money except food on bills, and now I'm getting really good at this. I've gotten really good at this. I've come up with my own technique. So all my favorite pictures of the men in my life, I'm able to draw that into a portrait that captures the expression that I want. And I've been using this. So now I'm designing all my own covers. So the next question was, how do I get this cover into a beautiful cover, ideal for Amazon or, you know, for my Kindle books? Like, they all have different dimensions and stuff. So I... I said, well, Jesus said you can't get anything like Adobe Photoshop. I can't spend any money. So I decided to learn how to use GIMP. And let me tell you, there's a learning curve on that program. It took me like a year, but I'm now pretty good on GIMP. So I use GIMP to design my book covers and my, the covers for my audio books. And what I do is I take my own home-drawn portraits. My, my I've got a whole bunch of them. Like uh, I could just show you. Um, 
good stuff. Here they are. These are my own pictures. And see, I drew these myself using, um, and I just kind of like go through here and I, um, and I, uh, to put the what I do is I make a JPEG file of these. This is an example of what I have. I make a JPEG file of my drawings, oil, and then I put it in the um, in the the GIMP program, and I use layers, and I'll put like one layer over another. Pick the lettering I want, align it. Pick I I will say it's a new project. I'll specify the dimensions, how many. Um, how much PPI I want, and like they recommend for Amazon paperback at least 300 PPI, but it's different for Kindle, so you, you got to read the requirements, and then you I specifically tailor each uh, picture for each cover. And now I'm getting really good on my own book cover designer, and I do it. I do a much better job than if I hire somebody because I know what I want my cover to say. And this just this is just is really I am I was so embarrassed I'm still embarrassed by this cover I didn't do this Rosebud Dog Books did this and then I had to do it over and I kind of maybe I made it worse but actually I think it's better than what they had and so the, to make a long story short I'm finding that it's better for me to do my own work because I always end up with a Jesuit if I hire somebody to publish my book I'll get a Jesuit publisher so it's better for me to do it myself so I design my own covers. I, for, I write my own books, and then I format them for Amazon. And I asked my men, should I just limit myself to Amazon, or should I branch out from there and use other publishing? And they said, well, the Jesuits are getting a lot of the publishers out there. And as you already know, they have just about all the literary agents. So your best bet is just do everything yourself and just keep working with Amazon. Now, now I know how to make my own audiobooks. I design my own audiobook covers. When I first started making audiobooks, I almost gave up. The uh, they have these ACX specifications, and they all say that you got to have a fancy mic, you got to have a special mic, and you got to uh, you have to uh, uh, you know meet all these specifications. I almost gave up, but I said, you know, let's try this because one of my fans asked me to try, so I spent about three weeks learning how to set up. How to make my own audio and um, I'm, now I'm really good at it but when I first started off I almost quit it was so confusing like they would their specifications are they there's a list and uh, it's if you're not familiar with that if you're not familiar with video editing editing it's quite overwhelming it's like whoa but, but Jesus says I have the highest IQ of any woman on the planet and I figured out how to do it but I let me Yes, anyway, so I, that's kind of like getting off the subject, but mainly what I'm saying is Jesus has shown me how to do all this where I don't have to hire people. If I had to hire a reader, they would not read the book as well as I would. First of all, they don't know the story like I do. They don't, they don't know the characters like I do, so I'm the best reader. And I actually took, gave myself some acting lessons. In fact, I have a book here, like... For, back in 2012, I got some books on acting. <laughs> this is Stanislavski. I basically used the Stanislavski, or they call it like method acting. The reason why is because I, I am a character writer. And this is something the Jesuits don't get. Either I think they're deliberately not getting it because they're trying to make me appear like some kooky wooky writer who's no good, you know. But I'm a character writer. So, um... My goal in each book I write is to explore a character. And uh, so therefore, sometimes I go into these long descriptions about the character's thoughts and emotions that get really deep and help you to understand the character better. And the Jesuits are going in there and criticizing me and saying, oh, you're a lousy writer. We're, we're sick of hearing the word awesome and all this. And what they'll do is they'll take a magnifying glass and the uh, supposed weaknesses of my writing and just magnify it. You say, what are you wearing a bikini for? I weigh 130 pounds, but when I took my waist measurement, it was 27. Of course, they recommend you suck in your gut when you do that. That's what Dr. Joseph McCullough said. But I am at, I am, I'm still following Jesus Christ, calories in, calories out, at myfitnesspal.com. And it really works. Though I'm discovering that if I want to have this bikini figure, I need to eliminate nuts. <laughs> 
I just, I can't eat those and stay within the range that I want. But if I eat, um, I'm discovering like strawberries with non-fat sour cream doesn't really put the weight on. And like when I get cravings at night, that's a really good thing for me to eat. And strawberries are not a high calorie fruit. So I've been, so I've been using strawberries with non-fat sa uh, sour cream as like my bedtime snack. I'm, that's my weakness. But you know, I don't gain weight on that. So that or something like that. Um, so the calories in, my goal is to get to 128 pounds. I feel, I'm at about 130 right now. Um, and I'm still dropping, I can't believe it. You, you set your goals on this site and you, as long as you follow their guidelines and don't exceed the number of calories and do the exercise that you need to do, you can get to your the weight you want. This is what happened to me yesterday. I was vacuum cleaning to follow the Gale commandments. See this? I put this up on high, so I, up high so I could vacuum the carpet. I get like move everything out of the way so I can vacuum the carpet real quick because I uh, I have to get this place vacuum before 10 o'clock or my neighbors are going to complain because I've got a very loud vacuum cleaner. So that makes it quicker for me. And so I go through this and um, I, it fell down to the ground. I heard this big crash and I thought, oh no, Jesus, this is what I get for obeying your Jesus command, I mean, your Gale commandments. It crashed. I thought, oh no, my paper shredder broke. Well, I found out that even though this side fell off, I have a little strip here where I can still lay it here on top of my garbage can and use it, and it still works miraculously. Thank you, Jesus. I thought, is this what I get for obeying you? I break my things. And I'm hoping my vacuum cleaner is going to last. I've, it's a half a cleaner, but I haven't changed the filter in God knows how long. I, I actually clean it with the vacuum cleaner. And um, I bought that back in 19, uh, 2000 in Seattle, and then I brought it with me from Seattle here, and that's the one I'm using. But it is the noisiest. I think HEPA vacuum cleaners are designed to be noisy. It's a HEPA, but it's probably not working like HEPA because I haven't changed the filter in how long. But pretty good vacuum cleaner, but man, is it noisy. It was expensive, too. I think I paid like 200 bucks for that thing. It's a Eureka HEPA upright. Uh, if that goes and I have to get another vacuum cleaner, I won't be getting an expensive one like that. <laughs> Something that just does the job, you know. I don't think it's doing HEPA anymore anyways. Um, because I haven't changed the filter and so on. But look at this. This is at 130 pounds, but my waistline was 20, was 27 when I measured it. So I'm getting down there, but I think if I want to have like, and I'm 58 years old on Saraquel. And so anyways, I'm telling you, the Lord is just, and my hair, Jesus said, you can't go to a beautician. So what I've been doing is my hair, it's, sometimes it grows out a little uneven and I just get my scissors and nip it. I've got my cut memorized now. I know which my best cut is. It's a layered, kind of like a layered bob. And I, um, I have the cut memorized. But I said, Jesus, you think I can cut my own hair? But guess what? He knows what I can do. And he, he and I'm thinking, you know, when I first started writing, I figured, Back in the 1990s, I figured that you just had to hire everybody to do it, and you needed an agent. But let me see, when you're exposing the Jesuits, that isn't the way to go. Anyways, I'm going to make an audio book out of everything. I was, I actually did Act One of Law, my Star Trek teleplay, and I think I did pretty stinking good on that thing. Don't listen to those Jesuit reviewers; they're full of crap. You know, I wrote that as like a one-month-old writer at the time, and it's amazingly good considering how old I was as a writer. And um, I took, I made, I found Data an attractive innocent, and I tried to portray him as an innocent. He's a uh, Data sacrifices to keep his daughter alive from crazy Lore, his evil twin. And anyways, I plan on making an audio book out of. <laughs> that sunlight in the background, out of everything. And um, uh, <laughs> I have setbacks, but Jesus knows what he's doing. He's taught me how to format my own books and everything. I'm going to make an audio book out of everything. I've even got a, I'm going to even create a Jeep Google Plus page that shows you where you can get all my audio books.